Well, good afternoon everyone. My name is Daniel from Single Malt Jack. We're a brand new channel and essentially we're going to be focusing on whiskey, beers and barbecues. What more can you ask for? So stay tuned and uh, I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction today. Now before I get started, I just want to confess, I've never done absolutely anything social media related. So I've never done YouTube, I've never done Facebook, I've never done is it Instagram. Um, we've literally only just launched uh, this a couple of days ago. So please bear with me, I have zero editing skills. I'm going to have to heavily rely on my notes to get me through this. So please bear with us, um, I promise you guys that this is just a start. I promise you it's going to get better. Uh, don't expect too much from this video because I, I, I know it's not going to be fantastic and I apologize for that right now. Um, but really what I wanted to do was just get everyone's minds off this whole COVID virus situation. Um, having said that, I really do hope that you and all your families are safe and well and healthy. Uh, do the right thing. Uh, stay at home. Uh, don't go out. <laughs> don't, don't go gathering groups or, or anything like that. Just try and do the right thing and stay at home. So I trust all you guys are. So anyway, let's get started. Today is going to be essentially a bit of an introduction. As you can see, I've just poured myself a beer. Uh, we've got beer on tap here. We've got soda water on the other tap. Um, I'm going to run you guys through my bar. Um, don't want to talk about it too much because essentially I want to do a whole video essentially just on the bar how I manufactured it, how I set it up, why I set it up this way, the materials I used, um, what I've got on tap, um, how I gas it, how I refrigerate it. So that'll be a completely separate uh, separate video. Um, but today is essentially just gonna be an introduction. Um, and as you can see back here with the whiskies, I have done a little bit of prepping, I, I must confess. Um, I usually do have quite a few whiskies in my home bar already, but what I've actually done is gone out and bought a few more just in case we get to that stage where we've got to lock everything down. So I'm going to run you through what I bought today and why I bought it and why I think it's important to have some of these whiskies as, well, essentially these are my staples. Okay. So I haven't gone overboard with the, with the pasta and the rice and the five kilos of mince in the freezer. Uh, you know, we've kept that at a bare minimum. Um, really what we've done is we've, we've gone out before this whole liquor ban has, has come into place and, and we've purchased some nice, some nice whiskies. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through, I'm gonna essentially run you through um, some of those. So essentially if we, if we look at these from, uh, from left to right, um, I'll just explain what I've done and, and why I've done it. I think teachers is probably a, a good place to a good place to start guys so I'm sure you're all aware of this and um, for those whiskey drinkers out there that uh, that know their whiskey I know you're going to be looking at me going well why the hell have you got a bottle of uh, teachers um, it's a $36 bottle of whiskey okay it's definitely not top shelf stuff by by any means um, but whenever I can find this $36 or, or less um, from any of the Dan Murphy's or the Liquorlands or BWS. I usually buy a couple of bottles of this. I find it's it's fantastic to have on your bar, you know, especially if, if visitors come and they're, they're not into whiskey or they, they think they are into whiskey and they say, oh, you know, what whiskey would you like? Oh, whatever, you know, you, you pick. I find this is this is great. You know, it's, it's fairly smooth. Um, for that sort of price range, you can't find anything better. I mean, you, you know, this Johnny Walker Red, even Johnny Walker Black, um, you know, all those, those other grants and uh, Black Douglas and all those budget whiskies, they, they literally do not compare to teachers. If you want a budget whiskey, um, you know, you can, even, you can even drink this straight. What I usually do is recommend putting a bottle or two in the freezer. And what it does is it chills the whiskey down. Uh, so you don't even have to add ice to it and you can, you can drink it neat. Uh, my father-in-law absolutely loves it, um, which I'm pretty 
um, lucky that he, that he does like teachers and, and not some of the more expensive stuff. So that's a positive. Um, it is a blended whiskey. It's at 40%. I won't go into it too much, um, but it, look, it's just a fantastic staple whiskey to have. Um, you know, a couple of these in the cupboard or the freezer. You know, you can make cocktails with it. You can make whiskey sours. You can make old fashions with it. A uh, little bit of peat in it, um, which which sort of does set it apart from from some of the other budget whiskies on the on the market. So, look, I'm not going to talk too much about these whiskies because essentially I'm going to do um, a bit of a product review and a, and a tasting review on on each of them at, in in different stages and on different videos. Um, so that today is not really the day to be going into too much depth. Um, Look, I don't, I don't usually buy um, Dimple. Um, it's not a bad whiskey. It's a, it's a blended whiskey. Um, I believe that's, this is also at 40% um, alcohol as well. It is. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a Scotch whiskey. It's, it's fairly smooth. Um, it doesn't have much peat or smoke in it. Uh, quite a caramel style whiskey. But I found a bottle of this at Dan Murphy's for $42. I think it was just under $42. And I thought... You know what? That's that's not a bad price for Dimple. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not huge on, um, you know, essentially spending a lot on on whiskies. I mean, I I think it's the same same concept with with wines as well. You know, I think I think the skill is to find a reasonably priced whiskey, or even look out for specials and sales, uh, and then be able to buy a good quality whiskey at a at a lower price. I, I think. That, that really is the skill. So, you know, we're not going to be talking about hundreds of hundreds of dollars bottles of whiskeys, although we may later on, we'll, we'll see how we go. We might get there. Um, but without going on too much about the, uh, the dimple, uh, the Glenfiddich is, I have to say, one of the bottles you have to have in your whiskey cabinet at, at all times. Um, this, this whiskey is just absolutely fantastic. I managed to pick a couple of bottles. I always look out for when this whiskey is less than $70 a bottle, okay? If it's over 70, I usually don't buy it. I'll wait till it's under 70. I picked up a couple of bottles for $62 at, at Dan Murphy's, okay? And I thought that was a fantastic price. In this price range, you cannot find a better whiskey under $75 Australian. Uh, I, just, I just don't think it's possible. Um, it's a Speyside whiskey, it's at 40%. Um, it's, it's a Scotch whiskey. Uh, Glenfiddich Distillery is absolutely amazing. These these guys do some fantastic stuff, and I, I want to introduce you to some of their other stuff. They're 15 year old, they're 18 year old, maybe even the 21 if we can get our hands on it a little bit later down the track. Um, they they also do a an IPA cask as well, so they they've got a huge variety. Um, but you know, for a, for a single malt, uh, entry level single malt uh, Scotch whiskey, this is really at that price point, it's I don't think you can beat it. For, for me, that's my every week go-to whiskey. And, and I'll usually just drink it neat, or if I want to chill it down a little bit, I'll, I'll put a, a big ice cube in there so it doesn't, doesn't melt too much. Um, but you know, that, that essentially is the, the Glenfiddich. So sorry, I'm just gonna take a bit of a sip of uh, beer. I'm getting a little bit thirsty here. Mm, that's good fresh beer on tap. Um, a little bit weird I'm drinking beer today and talking about whiskies, but anyway, later on we might talk about beer and, and drink whiskey, so who knows, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. Um, this little guy here um, is a Nikka whiskey at cast strength, so 51.4%. Um, I've been looking for one of these for absolute months now. Um, they're just impossible to find here in, in Australia at the moment. I remember probably about five or six years ago, Always used to have one of these in on, in my bar or on my bar. Um, they're about fifty five dollars a bottle. Um, really, really fantastic, smooth whiskey. Very rich, very flavoursome. Um, you know, for a for a Japanese whiskey. Um, I think back in the time was you know just when Japanese whiskies were coming out, and everyone was saying you know are these any good? So I think the price point they sort of they met the market with the right price, and everyone was you know buying them and thinking oh well, this is. This is not too bad, actually. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty good drop. Um, and then I think there was a bit of a shortage of supply, and then everyone was saying, "Well, we want more." And then the whole supply demand thing. So, so now it's sort of it is it is available. Um, you, you won't find it at every bottle shop. I've I've been to about a dozen different Dan Murphys and Liquorlands and BWSs. I literally just found one uh, today. Um, 
so I was able to, to get it so that I can have a quick chat about it with you guys. But stay tuned, I haven't opened this bottle yet and um, I haven't actually tried one of these for a couple of years now. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, I will open that on another video and give you guys a bit of a whiskey review on it. So stay tuned. Now, one of my other staples, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but sort of as we start going down the bar, the whiskey start getting a li little bit more complex, uh, a little bit more expensive, I, I guess, for, for some of them. Um, and the flavor profiles are changing a little bit as well. So this one here is, is another whiskey I, I haven't opened yet. Um, it's the Abelau 12, and, and for me, it's an absolute classic. Uh, the, the color of it is just, is just fantastic. I believe it's also uh, 40%, it is. But the beauty about this one is it's, it's actually been double cast. Okay, so they, they put it in two different uh, oak barrels. Okay, so, so the first barrel is a ex-bourbon barrel, uh, and then they transfer that after a certain amount of years uh, to finish it off in the last part of the maturation stage into a sherry cask. Okay, so, so the flavor profiles are a lot more complex. You know, you do get a hint of that sherry flavor, a few cinnamon spices. Um, with this one, you get a bit of toffee, and um, you know, there's definitely some maybe a bit of coffee in there, um, cocoa, things like that. And, and it's really, really a nice, a nice whiskey, a little bit of sweetness. It's not smoky, it's not peated at all. Um, you know, all, all these sort of whiskies through, through to the Balvenie are, are very, you know, very light, not, not heavily peated as, at all, or no peat for most of them. Um, but that, that for me is a fantastic whiskey. Um, I pick that, I look for when it's on special. Um, I think that whiskey from memory was just under the $80 mark, about 79 something. So whenever I can find that on special, I'll, I'll buy a bottle or two. It's, it's fantastic. Um, one of the ones I'm really enjoying right now is the Balvenie 12. Okay. Uh, Balvenie do some fantastic stuff and, and you can pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for, for their stuff. I love their bottles, um, with the cork, their labeling. It's, it's just fantastic. Um, this one is also a, they call it a double wood, but same kind of thing as the Abelau 12. So, so it's actually um, double cast matured. Okay, so, so same, same kind of thing, you know, very, very sort of similar flavor, flavor profile. Um, I would definitely rate the Balvenie a little bit, um, a little bit sort of more complex and the flavor a little bit smoother than the Abelau, but, but not by much. Um, in terms of the price, I wasn't able to find this on special, so I had to pay full price. I think it was about $105 uh, Australian. Um, so for me at that price point, it is probably a little bit too expensive. Um, I, I think that if you can get this around the 80 to $90 mark, you're, you're doing pretty well. Anything over that, I think, it's, I think it is a little bit too expensive for that. Um, just wanted to show you guys the Lagerbullen. Um, this is the, the 16. Um, you know, this, this is sort of a price point around that 110 to $120 mark. Um, once you get to this whiskey, the, the flavors start getting a lot more complex. Um, you know, it's a lot, lot smoother. It's 16 year old, so you can see the, I don't know if you can see, uh, but the, the color profile, this bottle is a little bit tinted as well, but the color profile is a little bit darker. Um, so it's, um, it's really is a quite a nice whiskey just to, to sip on an after dinner style whiskey. And it does have quite a lot of peat in it. Okay, not, not a high end amount of peat, but sort of a, a medium out of five. It might be a, a two, two and a half out of five in terms of the peat. So it, it does give it a little bit more complexity. Um, then we move down essentially to the, to the two Ardbegs that I had. Um, I, I had the Ardbeg 10 year old, okay, which is another ILA single malt. And this is very, very heavily peated. Uh, I mean, if there's, a, if there's a 10 out of 10 for peat, then this Ardbeg is, is definitely it. So um, that's, that is quite a nice drop. I think you're gonna pay some, somewhere around the $80 mark for the, for the 10 year old. But what I'm really, really excited about is the Ardbeg Ugadale. Um, you know, this, this is a little bit more expensive. It, that retails for about 150. Um, it, it is just an amazing drop. You know, it's, it, it is heavily peated. It's quite a complex whiskey. Uh, I haven't actually tasted this for, for probably over 12 months now, so I'm quite excited to, to crack that open and, and just to have a bit of a sip and to do a bit of a review on that. So 
I'm not going to talk too much about it now. I managed to get this on special. Um, I think Dan Murphy's had it for about $115, $120. I can't remember the exact number. Um, but I think at that price point, it was an absolute steal. So I'm very excited about that um, Uberdale, and I'm definitely going to do a review on that. So hope this has been useful. Um, as I said, don't want to go into too much detail about the bar and the whiskies and, and, and what we're doing. This is just really just a brief introduction. So as I said, apologize for the, for the camera skills. I'm going to apologize in advance for the editing skills because I, I've never done it before. Um, so I just don't know how to do it or what to expect. So as I said, I needed my notes, um, you know, a few mistakes in between that I'm not going to edit out. So this is just going to be raw and exclusive and it's, it's not going to be edited. So we're just going old school here until I can figure out how to do things a bit better. But stay tuned. We've got a lot of videos coming up. I'm going to try and film one a week if I've got the time. So we're going to go into risky whiskey reviews. We're going to go into beer reviews. I'll do a... Uh, a whole video on how I set up the whole home bar and, and the features it's got and, and uh, why I built it um, and essentially how, how I built it um, and, and why I did it that way. Um, we're going to do some, uh, some cocktails, so we'll go into some whiskey sours, some old fashioned, um, we'll, do, we'll do a few other cocktails. Um, we're going we're gonna to do some smoking on the barbecue. I want to do some whiskey aging. I want to make some uh, fireball whiskey, so some, some chili and cinnamon style uh, made at home. I want to go into um, making some, uh, some some syrup for tonic water, okay, that we can mix with the soda water that we got here on tap. So we'll do a, a video and a review on that. Um, so look, stay tuned. If, if you've liked some of this content, please subscribe with us. Um, you know, we're Single Malt Jack. We've just started. Um, this is what we're doing. It's essentially whiskey, beer and barbecue. So it can't be more simple than that. So stay tuned. Uh, follow us like, comment if you can, and we'll, we'll try and get back to you. Thanks guys.